everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the project and event manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. I will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available, available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will be sharing the link in the chat for our channel. And if you've not been on a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, please feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. Which brings us to today's session. Today is day two of the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp. Before we begin, uh, our speaker here, Bruno, has a quick word for you. Hello, friends. My name is Bruno Capuano. I work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I want to welcome you to the Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp. I am a Latin person in my, in my 40s. I am in my office today. I am wearing a Reactor Black T-shirt. And again, I'm so, so happy to be with you in these five-week programs. We are going to try to help everyone who want to get the PL900 certification. And hey, this is also going to be super fun. The idea of the bootcamp is to help you to get prepared to pass the PL900 exam. And the PL900 is an amazing certification, which basically helps people who are in that, in that path to get a better understanding of the Power Platform uh, and the tools that we have in the Power Platform. An example, if you want to automate the process, how you can use Power Automate for that, if you want to get more insights about your data, you can use Power BI. The whole idea of the plot of this bootcamp is to get is to help you to get prepared for this certification. PL900 is a great certification. And hey, because there are changes going on in the Power Platform, this exam is going to be, they're going to be, we are going to have a new version just at the end of the bootcamp. We are going to add extra session to cover those changes when we arrive at the end of September. Also, there is important that you need to know that there is a study guide that you can download for free. You can get and have a chance to review the sample questions. And there are two ways that you get can get prepared for this exam. You can get an instructor, let paid course. You can pay for an instructor. You can pay for a course to get prepared. And the other one, is the free version, which is use one of the Microsoft Learn learning path. And this is going to be our main focus during this bootcamp. And let's also quickly talk about the learning path, the PL900 Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals. As you can see on the main page, there are no requisites. You can get here clean and start to learn. This learning path uh, includes 10 modules. These 10 modules are focused in a general uh, introduction to the Power Platform, how you can use uh, Power Apps, introduction to Power Apps, how you can build a Canvas app. There are so many amazing information here. During this bootcamp, we are going to review these modules. We are going to learn together and we are going to get specific insights in each one of them. So you can remember, you can get better knowledge about the Power Platform. And this is how the bootcamp is going to work. Remember, we talk about that the learning path includes 10 modules. And the idea for this bootcamp is each week we are going to cover two modules and we are also going to have community hours, office hours to talk about this. So we are going to spend 10 weeks all together. You can take a look at the full agenda and have all of the dates and the links in our main Power Platform Bootcamp page and also the links to the community hours meeting. And important, the idea is that every week on Monday and Tuesday, we are going to review a module and then we are going to have community hours of 30 minutes on Wednesday to basically talk, network, get to know each one better and also to answer a specific question that you may have around the, 
exam or the modules. And it's also important that the first week, because it's labor there in North America, we are not going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We are going to start on Tuesday. Also, important to note, all of the modules review sessions are going to be recorded. You can come back, you can review, you can take a look in the Reactor YouTube channel and watch again the module recording. And also, the community hours are not going to be recorded. I, we want this to be an office, an, an open, and a super safe space so everybody can ask questions. So we are not going to record that, but we are going to be open to host more community hours if needed. So again, please take a look at the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp page, where you are going, where you're going to have links to each of all of the sessions. You're going to see the dates and the time for everything. And hey, feel free to contact us if you have any more questions. And that's it. This is a super quick intro that you probably noticed I recorded to don't, so I don't need to do this every time during these 10 sessions. And Let's start. Let's start with the bootcamp. I'm so happy to be here and I hope that you enjoy and learn a lot with us during these five amazing weeks. So here we are again. Hello, everyone. So happy to be here. Hello to everyone who was in the chat uh, mentioning where they are joining. It's super nice to be with all of you. And hey, Let's start reviewing yesterday's, uh, what we saw yesterday. It's going to be a 10 minutes, five minutes uh, uh, application. I don't, if you never use it, this is Kahoot. This is an online platform. And the idea is that you can use your phone. If you have a phone, scan the QR or go to kahoot.it. Alexia is going to share the, the link and we are going to, to start the question. So I will give a couple of minutes so people can join and uh, Elle is asking what is the topic about. Today we are going to talk about module two. It's going to be about Dataverse, the Dataverse, the Microsoft Dataverse. So what, this is what we're going to, to see in five or 10 minutes. Uh, right now, what we are, what I want to do is basically do a quick Kahoot. I will wait until we have 10. 15 people and uh, basically start to see, so to start to do some Q&A to see how good we know, or what do you think about the, the Power Platform? What do you know about the Power Platform and more? So see more people joining, super cool. Also, there is a 20 second delay between what I see and what you, uh, what I see here live, so I will give a lot of time between question and question, so everybody has time to, to reply. Hey, we have 13 people. Okay, a couple more, and, and we want to start. And remember, if you can't scan the QR code, kahoot.it, and the, the game pin is 72157. Uh, Alicia, I think that's yesterday's link, so this is not the correct link, that the one that you share. Just go to kahoot.it and use this game pin, 72157. So, wait, we almost are at 20 people, super cool. When we hit 20, we are going to start. Remember, kahoot.it, 72157. Okay, 20. So, let's start. First question. And the first question is, your social media engagement officer has requested you to help in boosting followers and retweets on Twitter. How we can, how could you help her to get more information to better understand the, the engagement, how the engagement is increasing? So, red answer, create a Power BI report to capture and analyze data from Twitter. Uh, blue answer, a Power Apps portal. And yellow answer, Power Automate doing approvals here and there. It's okay, what do you think? Samantha, I will get to your question uh, as soon as we finish this. So I leave a lot of time here. I will give you more time so you know if there are someone else who want to join. And remember, if you just get here, kahoot.it and the pin is 72157. If you want to join, 
And hey, we have 21 answers and 30 more seconds to go. Uh, this is, I, I want to be honest with you, the first time that I did this one, I chose the wrong answer. But if you remember what we talked about yesterday, yesterday, how Power BI is to create dashboard for analytics, Power Apps is to create applications, and Automate is to create flows to connect, to do automatic uh, flows, you're probably going to... Uh, you're probably good to get the right answer. So five more seconds, three more seconds. And the first one is, yes, Power BI is the way to go. We can create a dashboard connected to Twitter Insights to get a better understanding of the data. And hey, once we understand this, we can get more and more, hey, we can help our engagement manager, the engagement manager to create more cool and amazing content. So second question, we are going to use less time in this one. So no points here, but kudos to Cloud Smart, Patricia, and everyone else. Uh, so second question is also an easy one. The team is become frustrated because, because with the number of time that they have to perform basic data entry on a project startup. There are many divisions who need the information and sometimes human error resulting in mistakes, making it more difficult to make sense of information. Which program will be better? Which program will help here to in this situation? And we have in red, uh, Power Automate, in blue, Power BI, and in yellow, Power Apps. So what do you think? Uh, if you remember yesterday, and we remember the first question, Power BI is all about dashboards. Power Apps, we can create apps. Power Automate is basically something that we can use to connect data between applications to automate activities. So this should be an easy one. Five more seconds. And yes, Power Automate is the tool. Remember, use Power Automate, we can get information for the first application that the user type it and enter the data and replicate and save the info in other systems. If we are typing one time, two times, three times in different applications, of course, we are probably going to have mistakes there. So hey, Power Automate is the answer. So again, zero points. We are not tracking points, but kudos for everyone. And let's go to the third one. This is going to be a fast one. So third question is, someone added a determined sharp point which prompts a workflow. Uh, to run a power automate. What type of operation have you used to start your workflow? A trigger, an action, or a function-based operation? Trigger is the red one, action is the blue one, and yellow is the function-based one. And remember, we are talking about power automate. We are talking about when we have a flow with activities and steps, who is going to, how this flow is going to be triggered, how is the flow is going to be started. This is a very easy one. I just realized that I share the answer while I was speaking. <laughs> okay, 10 more seconds. I need to put some music or something. I think I have a, a, a good plan here and I think I can share some music while I am waiting. So one second. And yes, it's a trigger. It's, the one that is going to trigger a flow. That's basically, this is the name. We, we start a power automate flow with triggers. Again, kudos to everyone. And hey, Isabella, super cool for you. Question four, we have two more. And this is what we talked yesterday. So a client likes the idea of implementing a Microsoft Power Platform solution, but the client is concerned about how they can go into interact with the custom API. What, how should you respond? Power, Auto, Power Platform offers the ability to create custom connectors for this purpose, which allows you to connect to Power Apps and Power Automate. The Power Platform has over 600 connectors to use in this situation. And the third one is the Power Platform use connectors that host a series of functions available for developers. So a custom API, if you are not a developer, uh, it's basically you have a system, maybe a custom dev system, and you have kind of an entry point, you have some kind of an entry place that you can interact with this system. That's called an API. If there is a way that we can create custom connections for interact with this system. So which one of the one that we have? Blue, let's reduce what we have. Red, let's use a custom connector. And yellow, 
there is something there. So yes, red one. We can create custom connector. We are not going to see this in the, I need to double check the materials. I don't think that we are going to see this, but if we get to that stage, we can connect everything in the Power Platform with other system. Chris, at four answers in a row, kudos for you, kudos for everyone who's participating. And last questions. Someone asks you to describe a connector. How do you respond? In red, connectors connect your data source to your app, workflow, or dashboard. In blue, connectors hold a series of functions available for develop. This one is a tricky one, and I remove the third one because I make a mistake here the first time that I did it. I was missing a, a, an answer, which is basically all of the above, but there, there is one which seems to be more correct than the other. So what do you think? Am I listening to some music? I see Alicia, are you playing music on my <laughs> or I am browsing something with music on the back. Okay, five more seconds. And yes, this is mostly semantics. The right one is the red one. Uh, I think I chose the, the, the blue one the first time that I did this. It's, you need to read twice, but yes, the connectors is basically help us to connect our data source, any data source to our app, workflow, that's more, more that we have here. So that was basically a quick, quick overview here. Thanks for participating. Let's move forward with this. It was just to try to see what, oh, sorry, what you learned from yesterday. And hey, let's move forward with, with today's content. Today, we are going to talk about uh, the module number two, which is the dataverse. And by the way, Samantha, Samantha is asking a super important question. Uh, you need to either have a work or a school email in order to, to try for free the Power Platform. Yes, that's the way that you can do this. And I am going to share this later today if you have time, or maybe tomorrow in the office hours. You can create an account in Outlook.com, in example, a free account, a free email account, and you will have access to try and test um, Power Automate. But if you want to try to test Power the full Power Platform, including Power BI, Power Apps, and more, you need a work or school account. If you don't have this, I am going to show, as I say, later today or tomorrow in the community hours, how you can do this, because you can request a dev environment and trial environment, and from there, you can enable these features. For, I think it's 30 or 90 days, I can't remember. I really, literally can't remember. I will share this later. But yes, officially, you need a school or a work account to, to work with the power, with the power to, to, to access the power platform. So let's start with the module. We are going to talk about Dataverse. Um, if anyone has a question, uh, let me unmark this one. If anyone has a question, this is the, the one that we have. Uh, Audios has saying that before we start, there is a huge bug in creative MSA free accounts right now. Are you really human parties? Buggy, check the forums. Uh, okay, I will check the forums. I create one yesterday to show the demo if we have time today or tomorrow. And it was kind of not a happy experience because they show me that your human captcha are annoying and <laughs> not very nice, but I understand that we do this to avoid uh, bot creation. But I didn't know about the bug. I will double check and if I find something, I will share it. Thanks for mentioning this. Going back to the Dataverse. So the Dataverse is a data service. It's a cloud-based data service. It's running in Azure and it's basically help everyone using the Power Platform to have access as a super powerful system to store data. And when I say data, we are going to talk about later about tables, we're talking about security, relationship between the data. So there are plenty of plenty of things uh, that you can do there. Then we are also going to talk a little about today about the common data model. And we are going to explain a couple of use cases. And remember, uh, we are going to Basically, also, I am going to show you how the, you can how this works. Besides, you can read this, so you can take a look at everything that we have here. But I really want to show you how this works 
in the, in the field. I'm going to open the data bars, create a table, and do more. And it's important. Uh, this is a super powerful solution. Just mention that solution that's run on Dynamics 365, Microsoft Dynamics 365, like fear services, marketing, customer service, and sales are running on top of the data bars. So it's super powerful. And when you have access to the Power Platform, you have access also to the uh, to the dataverse. You can see here there are different layers that they are all connected all together here, and we can talk about security. As we talked about yesterday, everything that runs on the cloud on Azure runs in the with the top level securities available that we have today. And in this scenario, if we talk about security, we can even go farther and apply security, which is basically an authentication-based security in elements like uh, at a row or column level. So we can define, okay, we have this table with data and we want to make this row secure for this specific user, we can do this. And hey, you can also, we can enable here security for AD, Azure Active Directory, using multi-factor authentication and more. Also, uh, we can create data. And we are going to see how we can create data. I'm going to show this later. But imagine that you have a table. You have a table in Excel with columns and data types. We can do something similar here, but with a lot, a lot of more information because we, can, we are going to have login. We are going to have audit history. We can do much, much more here. Everything that is going to be stored in the cloud, and this is important. The Microsoft Dataverse is not a service that you can run locally in your company or at your house. This is going to be in the cloud. So if you create an application that uses the Dataverse, this application needs to be connected to the, to the web. So it's going to be used the latest and amazing storage capabilities and services that they have. Uh, but it's going to be there. And audio, D, Y, W, uh, H, Y, uh, D, uh, I am going to take a look there. Really, I created one yesterday. It was it was long, but no problem. But I will try to find the, 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 the error and get back here with another suggestion. So thanks for, for letting me know. And finally, it's super open to be integrated. So we have, of course, connectors to connect to the database information in the Power Platform. We have connectors to connect uh, in Power Automate, Power Apps. I'm going to show you quickly how we can create one today. Uh, and then we have even there are open endpoints that we can use if you are a developer, but if you have a custom app that needs to be connected here to use this also. So it's amazing. And it's scalable. I mean, you can create, a, and this is important, I don't know if we talk about this now or later, but you can create, a, and you can scale, you can create one dataverse in a region. An example for me in Canada, yesterday we talked about how part of the security and part of the data privacy concept that we apply in the cloud platform is to save the data in specific regions. So when you create one instance of the dataverse, it's going to be stored in the regions. Canada, there are a couple in the US, in Europe, Asia, and there are a lot of places that you can create that. And they are going to give you the chance to scale, to grow. As let me check here my notes. And hey, you can even grow up to four terabytes per instance, which is a lot. I am not an expert in numbers in storage, but I can assure you that 4 terabytes is very, very big. And also, uh, depends on the license. There is a full model here that we are going to talk about license later. But remember that you can create different instances of this. You can create two, and an app can connect to one dataverse and the others. But what is super important here also to mention is about the common data model. And the common data model is probably one of the the feature that I like most about the dataverse because the common data model is a, is a standard that uh, defines uh, define entities that are super popular and super useful in business scenarios like account, telephone numbers, uh, postal code, regions, uh, sales, are more stuff. So when you create a dataverse, you have a lot of entities. Entities, think about an entity like a table. You have a lot of tables which are already defined that represents a phone call, an example. And what can you find in a phone call? Of course, a date, a starting time, an end time. Maybe you are talking with a person. Maybe you're talking with a client. Maybe you're talking with a vendor. So you want to log that. So the common data model define a standard about what is a phone call. And you have accounts, you have vendors, you have phone calls. There are 
can't remember the number of entities, so they are all here. When you create an instance of the Dataverse, you have all of this info. And you can create new ones if you want, or you can extend the one. So in example, if your system requires extra information for a phone call, you want to also log, I don't know, a link to a specific document that was discussed in the phone call, and this is not part of the common data model, you can extend that entity to include that column with a link or something else. So it's super powerful, it's super amazing. And yes, it bases is the base is a table. So as I mentioned before, if you know Excel and you can create a table and you know that you have columns and you can define data types, you can do something here. There are three types of tables, and after this, I'm going to show you. Remember, I like to use the product, so I want to show you the product. You have standard tables, manage, and custom tables. Custom tables are, I'm sorry, the standard tables are the out-of-the-box tables, the one that I just mentioned, like accounts or phone calls. Uh, you can create new ones. You can create, uh, I'm going to create one, new from scratch. Uh, and hey, you can connect tables. Each table has columns. Columns can be data types. So if you have an example name and a phone, uh, the name is probably going to be a string, and the phone is going to be a set of numbers with a mask because you can apply rules on top of the columns. You can define that the column needs to be required or not, but also on top of that, you, you can define that, hey, this is a required field only if we have these other two fields. So you can define rules on top of that, and there are different ways that you can do this. Let's, let's create one so you can take a look at how we are doing. So as usual, the way that I am going to do this, I am going to go to office.com, open the applications and open Power Apps. In the meantime, I'm going to launch my Zoom application. And here we are going to, I am in the right profile. Yes, I'm in the demo profile. We are going to create one table. I am checking the comments here, no comment. Perfect. So I will take time to drink some water while the Power Apps are going. Okay, it's taking longer than expected. Let me see if I have, no, this is StreamYard, let's hide this. Let me open also the admin. Not sure why it's taking so long. Let's me browse this again. And let me see if I have this open in the other portal. Sorry about that. This is live demos, and this is what happened when this stuff decided not to work when you need it. So let's wait a couple more seconds. And this is the admin, okay, you're asking me to sign, that's fine. Okay, we have one here, it seems that it takes a while, but it's loading. Super slow today. Terry is asking, that's a good question, if we still have the data role limitation in Power Apps, when, yes, the database can store millions of records, but we have a maximum data row limit is 2,000. I don't know. I will add this to my list of questions to answer tomorrow. I think I read about something like this in, I can't remember if it was in the documentation or in someone else, but I'm really not sure uh, if this is, this, the limitation is still there. Thanks for reminding me that. And hey, this is super slow today. I will give this one more minute and then switch to my network. 
Okay, so uh, user said that is low on their side, so I don't think it's limited to you. Okay, so an audio say the same here. So hey, maybe I need to open the work account and say to my colleagues, what is happening with the cloud? <laughs> and I love the the feed the hamster <laughs> comment. Okay, one more time, let's wait for it. I was literally building a demo 40 minutes ago for now. Let me see if it's only power apps. The mail seems to be working. Power virtual agent. Still slow. So yes, it seems that it's mostly power up. Okay, so we have it seems that it's alive. So we have power apps here. Again, the I'm sorry, we are going to see the dataverse here. We have in the, I have it here in the Power Apps uh, portal. So what I am going to see here is that I have here in Home, Learn, Apps, Create, I have here my access to the Dataverse. And if I open the Dataverse, I am going to see that I have access here to table choices, data flows, and more stuff. I'm not going to go to Synapse and unless someone asks about Synapse, that's a super cool product that is not part of the of the program of the of the program. So let's see the tables. And I remember this is an environment that was created out of the box. So it's going to have all of the tables that are provided by the common data model. And we are going to see if it's going to be live today. We are going to see accounts, we are going to see phone calls, we are going to see logs, customers, a lot of tables that are already predefined and already uh, defined here. And hey, it's taking some time. I recorded a couple of demos in videos because I was thinking that maybe something fails, but I wasn't expected to have a slow connection today for this. So let me also try to see if what is happening. In the meantime, I will go back to the to the documentation and I will follow what we have here. So as I mentioned, we have Excel files, we have tables, which are kind of Excel tables, Excel files, and we have the idea of columns. The columns uh, in a table can vary from one column to hundreds of columns. There is a full, full theory, there's a full subject around how you structure your data, how you define and create the schemas from your data. If you find that you are storing too much info and you have too many columns in a table, that's probably the moment that you can have two columns because you can also have relationships between these columns. And the relationship between a column is, imagine that you have a, a single table where you are storing all of the info from your purchase orders. And you store the orders, the item, the customer info, and more. Hey, you may want to have two tables at least. In one table, you will have the customer information. And in your orders table, you are going to have a link to connect those tables. So there are more, sorry about that. There are more scenarios that are available here. So you can take a look, I'm sorry, in the documentation, you can take a look uh, and they talk about how you can create a table, how are the relationship, how you can make this, this type of activities, and also how this works. Because in example, if you have a purchase order created with the customer in another table and you have the two tables connected, there are some rules here to basically define that you can't delete a customer row. If you define a, a table with customers and you have a customer defined it there, you can't delete that customer if that customer has been using a purchase order because in the future, Otherwise, you are not going to have as info. So maybe you need to switch and change your the way that you are uh, deleting the customer with the states, where the customer is going to be active or inactive, or you are going to have the different state for this. So there are different ways that you can do this. And this is all about, hey, how you can 
define this data, how you can define the relationship between these tables. So let's go back here. Oh my God, there it is. We finally have the tables. And as you can see here, we have a table name, accounts, address, appointment, attachments, business unit, contents, plenty more. I didn't create these tables. This is all the tables that came from the <coughs> common data model. And you have the type of tables here. So you have standards for accounts and address, an activity for an appointment, because yes, an appointment is an activity. We have also standards for attachment, business unit, contact, and currency, and hey, an email is an activity. So email is also an activity. And we have plenty more. And let's create a new one. Let's see if the environment is fast enough to create a new table. Not a good day for the for the demo. Sorry about that. Uh, one more time, try to see the entities and let's see if we can create one. In the meantime, let me see if I can log in with the admin. Okay, I am going to create a new table. It's not working, so let me see if I can Create one here, Dataverse, table. Oh, there it is. It's super, super slow. What we are going to have a table. I'm going to sync a table like an example, uh, bootcamp, bootcamp modules. And I'm going to define the same plural name. I don't care about this. Let's put both modules and enable attachment. And there are a couple of important things to note here. Even if my table name is going to be bootcamp modules, this is going to be how it's going to be defined internally. CR0, D0, uh, <laughs> underscore, bootcamp modules. I can define here what type of table is my table. Remember, standard, activity, or virtual. Who is going to use uh, on this? I'm going to make this uh, for an organization. And I can even define an image here. I can define some uh, a couple of very important attributes for the table. Like an example, I want to track changes. This means that every time that I add a row or change the values in a row, I can have a history with this. Also, I can add here a custom help. If someone wants to know more, I can have a document somewhere that can be linked here to know more about the table. Also, did the changes for the data. Uh, if I have the chance to create a quick form, uh, there are plenty, plenty of stuff that we can do here. Let me enable these two and audit changes. I don't know going to audit changes. And let's can have here appears in the results, and that's it. A couple of options here. So we have a new table, and uh, while the table is creating, I'm just asking, fantastic session as always. Thank you very much for the feedback. Uh, are we going to do similar series on serverless computing? Not me, but we are running a full program about serverless right now in September. So if you contact me in Twitter, in example, I can share more information. I am not a speaker of those areas, but I have my friends and colleagues who are amazing doing this, this stuff. So hey, if you want to know more, I can share uh, the serverless information. So a table is being created. I am going to switch to one that I already created to show here. And the name of the table that I created is PR 900 modules. Uh, I created this one just to, to show what we can do. And uh, hey, out of the box, when you create a table, you are going to have access to columns. You are going to have access to views. You can export and import the table. You can create an app for the table. Uh, it's taking a lot of time. So about today's demo. Maybe I will record the video and share the video with, with the full demo so you can know more because it's literally killing the way that we are doing the, the session today. It's just low as the new entity, and I need to add my columns here. So let's do this again to see which one is the faster. So 
will power up Dataverse. OK, so module seems to be load here. This is the one that I created. And hey, I can go here to columns. Let me open this in a new tab and start to define which are the columns that I want to have here. Out of the box, we have, because this is an entity that created in the Como data model, we are going to have columns like created by, who was the, the user that created the row. We are going to have created date, who was the user that, uh, the date that the row was created, the same for updated or modified, I can't remember the name. So there are plenty of stuff that we can do. We are going to have a key. We are going to have usually a key is this name column, and we can add more columns. And when I add a new columns, I am going to get a name. So an example, let's see, this should be fast. So I'm going to define a name, no description. I have data types here, and this is important. I can go for simple data types like text, number, date, time, lookup. This is when we define a relationship between two tables. Two tables, I can say lookup, OK, from here, I get the value from other table, a choice, currency, number, file. But let's do something simple. Let's, an example, do this contact email. So email is a text. But once we define a text, we can define a format. And as you can see here, we have a set of predefined formats, like email, phone number, with text, text, text area, the ticket symbol, URL, and more. So if I do email in example, when I add data, it's going to be the format of the email is going to be checked. And if I don't have a valid email, we are going to have a warning or an error there. Hey, we have a, an email. The same if I change an example to, to choice. I have two types of choice. I have a standard yes and no that we can do, or a choice. So let's change here for a choice. And when I have a choice, I will also have the chance to define a behavior. So an example, how this is going to work. This data should be optional or not. So this column should require that we have information there. And hey, because we are talking about a choice, we can even define if we are going to select multiple choice here. So I am going to do simple. I am going to do business required. And uh, hey, I want to sync this with a predefined set of choices, like an example, yes or no, or activity type. Remember the activity type was one of the activities. Uh, one of the entities that we see at the beginning, so we can put here, oh, hey, I have one which is chatbot language. So if I select this one, uh, I am going to, when I add a new in and add a new information here, I'm going to get the info from that table. Let's create a, a node, and I will add my choices with, I can start to add my choices. So an example, in progress, completed, not started. I can define my, my, my choices and I can define uh, uh, values here. So I will say zero, one, two, whatever I want to do. There are plenty of plenty of ways that we can define columns and we can add here more, more information. Uh, this panel, yes. But right now, if I want to create a new a new field, I can also define, remember that even if my field name is contact email. The full name will be zero, CR, zero D8, and the full, and then the name will there. I can enable security in the column. I'm not going to do this. And I can make it even sortable if I want to sort or organize information by this column. I am not going to do this. I am basically going to cancel. Uh, close the panel, yes. I open here all of the columns, all of the columns that are available in this, in this entity. So I have created by. A delegate for created by, created on, modified by. Uh, I created a couple of custom information here. So module complete is a yes or no activity, module name, module status. And hey, there are plenty of things that I can do here. And remember, this is all connected. This is all, this is all available also to work in the in the power, in the full power platform. So, so if I want to create an example. Uh, an app with Power Automate to maintain the data that I have here in the <coughs> in the in this Power oh, so slow today. Sorry about that. In this table, I can do something like this. So let's go to create an app. When I create a Power App, it's going to give me a couple of 
suggestions slash tutorials. Where do I want to create this? Maybe create this from scratch in a blank file, or maybe create this from the Dataverse source or something else. So I should get Dataverse here soon. There it is. One of the options is create an app from a Dataverse table. And it's going to give me the app to be connected with a screen from list all of, uh, list all of the information, uh, list the <coughs> uh, create a new item, update the item, or delete the item. So now I need to select the table. And in the meantime, let me open here the admin center environments. So we can talk about this quickly, quickly later while I am creating the app. So this should show me the app wizard anytime soon. It's super slow today. I'm so sorry. By the way, if I go back here and I move forward, the last chapter, and again, read, if you read this, uh, you are going to get more insights. I literally want to show the product. We are going to we talk about environments and how we can create environments. And the last one that I mentioned basically is different instance of the Dataverse. You can use, you can create these and they are going to be created in a region and everything that is going to be uh, in that environment, uh, connectors, power apps, uh, the Dataverse is going to be stored in that regions. So this is also nice to know. And then business rules, like I just mentioned, uh, it's basically the chance that we can, that we have to the say, okay, when someone creates a table, I'm sorry, when someone creates a new row here, these two fields need to be validated, or I am going to show a new field with those two values. So going back, I am going to create a power app from scratch using this sample table that I created, PL900 modules. So this is going to take a while. This is going to take a couple of seconds usually. Today everything is slow. So I am going to wait here for, for this is going to be until we get there. But the idea is that as soon as it's created, you see here that I have all of this info. Uh, let's go here. Uh, no, not this one, sorry. Uh, let's open this one here. Let me put this one here. And if I go to see the data that I have here, you see that I have mod three, mod four, uh, it starts to do something. So I can go here, open this element. Let's edit the here. Let's change the complete status. I have a combo here. It's the same combo that I have here, defined in the options here. So let's change this one to not started in the name. Let's change the name. Let's send the module name. Updated and the module complete. No, I will save this. And after a couple of seconds, if I go back here in the main info and I start to edit the info, let's edit the info in a new tab, I should see these changes here. Everything is connected and I created with two clicks directly here one module in the Power App. I'm sorry, I created here with two clicks a Power App that is going to update the data in the in the table in the dataverse. It's going to take a long, long time to do this. So while this is loading, let me minimize this so we can see this. Let me show you the final topic that we want to see today, which is about uh, business rules. So we can create tables, we can create columns, we can define how the data is going to be structured, we can define relationships. But you can also define business rules. And business rules is kind of more complex than a required or not required process. We can define decisions. So an example here, I have a decision that is going to basically say, OK, if the status is complete, I have a combo file here, option file with three status, not started, in progress, and complete. In this entity, I am going to trigger when I said that the status is complete, I am going to basically say that in the entity, in the field model status, when the status is complete, let's do something. And what we are going to do here, let's change the value to complete to true. So we are going to update other values. We can do 
plenty of plenty of other activities like this, and we can define rules. And these rules are going to be evaluated at any time that any application is going to work with the data in the dataverse. So if we are accessing the application and the dataverse, I'm sorry, using the Power Apps or a logic uh, or a Power Automate logic flow or the Thermal App, every time that someone's work with this data, this is going to be this is going to be uh, oh, this is going to be the final and apply here. So let me open again the modules. Okay, since that is get back to life. And we have here the information. We see that there it is, the module updated, and everything is here. And we only have 10 more minutes. Uh, oh, Christiana asked a question about, can you share this app to any person? Yes, that's more on the Power App side. Uh, we are going to see this later. Where is my Power App? Who created Power App? Uh, there it is. Uh, this is more on the Power App side, but when I create this application, I can do, uh, you are going to see this more. Let's see, PL 900 modules labs. I am going to save the Power App. And when I save the Power App, because I am working in a school or organization, I can do something like this. So let me hide your comments as soon as the app is shared. Uh, I can start, I'm uh, sorry, saved. I can share the app later with, I'm sorry, I was very fast there, but I am sharing the app and I can start to use people here. So I know that I have Alex here as my coworker. So I will share the app with Alex. And hey, I can even define that Alex is going to be a co-owner. That means that Alex is going to have permission to update and edit and change the application. Or, hey, I just want him to use it. But I can even add uh, Alan, or I can even add groups. If I have a group that have all teams, so I want to everyone in the sales and marketing group to be using this application, I add this group. And, hey, at this moment, everyone there is going to have permission to do this. By the way, I have here very, very low permissions to do this kind of stuff. Usually, if you want to share this with the full group, you probably need some kind of IT admin permissions. This is just for the demo. But yes, once you create this and you click Share, everyone in the sales team plus Alex, I can't remember where, <laughs> what is the role of Alex, they are going to have permissions to use this application. And you can see here that the main idea is that Adele is the owner of the application and Alex and the full sales and marketing teams are user. And this application is using, and this is important, and this application is using in the connections. We can see in these applications that is connected to, oh, sorry, I need to refresh. It's going to refresh anytime soon. It's connected to the dataware. So each one of these users, when they're using the application, they're going to update data in the dataware, dataverse. So I hope that this answers the, the question. Christiana asked if we can share this with people outside the organization. The, the answer is no, you can't do this. What you can do is you can create a specific type, and this is more on the power app side. I don't want to go deep today, but you can create a portal. And a portal is kind of a website. It's going to be renamed in a new product that is going to be called Power Pages, I think. But that's the way that you can do this when you create something which is public. But it's a, it's a different process. I mean, it's similar. Is going to be very similar of what we have here, an application like this, but it's not like you can choose people and share it outside. You need to host this, define some kind of authentication and, and other scenarios. But yes, you can sell, uh, share out the organization using portals or later power pages. We are going to see this when we do the, the apps. And going back to the database. So oh, there it is. So this is the app. I'm going to go back here. I have my app. And the app is connected to my dataverse. If at any moment I add new tables, I add, uh, I change the, the table because I add a new field, or I change the data type of a field, please don't do that. I can get here in the Power Apps, refresh this, and it's going to basically refresh my schema. And I am going to have access to the latest table schema here in the Power Apps. So we are almost at the end. 
Christiana said, great. Oh, you're welcome. Happy to share. And again, we are going to see more of that when we go to the Power Apps. Can't remember which Power App is going to be next week, September the 12th. We are going to talk about Power Apps, and the next days we are going to talk about Canvas. So tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday, we are going to go deep on those questions. And hey, we are going to even create something that is going to use this. And as I said, we have, let me go back to the other user. We have the table here. We have the columns. We have everything that we need here in the in the table. I can add more columns, as I, as I said. I can edit the table properties. But the full idea here is that, hey, you, you need to remember that the Dataverse is the core component where we are going to store data. Uh, when we use the Power Platform, and it's a great place because if you ever, if you work with Dynamics, you probably know all of this. If you never work with Dynamics, this is kind of Excel on, st on steroids. It's super powerful about relations in data, historic data, and more. You can do plenty of plenty of other stuff. So hey, I hope that you get a feeling about this. Please review the module. Please take a look at. Uh, the, the specific insight that we have on Dataverse. I went very fast on the module. This is a 30-minute module, so it's not very complicated. And next week, we are going to start with a couple of questions around Dataverse. And then next week, is all about power apps. Let's create apps that are going to do this. We see a couple of huge, big spoiler teasers today and tomorrow. And finally, remember, to do, tomorrow we are going to have an open mic session, not, not recorded, uh, community hours. If you have any questions, let's do this. I am not going to have time to show you how you can create a lab environment to test this. I'm going to show that tomorrow. So I think that's it. Uh, I will stay online for a couple of questions. But as usual, thanks a lot. We share a link with the, with the survey. Let us know what, what can we do better, how we can improve the next session. And hey, I'm looking forward for the next one. Goodbye, everyone.